welcome to another My Outlander Purgatory Recap. This week, we continue our Season 5 coverage with a recap of Episode 504, The Company We Keep. Ready? Then pour yourself a wee dram, settle in, and let's do this! Hi everyone! Hi everyone! I'm Tracy. I'm Carol. And we are my... Outlander... Purgatory. <laughs> Carol, how are you doing this evening? Um, I'm okay. You guys, I wish you could have seen that countdown from Tracy because that was like, oh my gosh, I think we're like in Hollywood or something. Is I don't it know. Like five, four. <laughs> Carol, do what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> stink eye, stink eye, stink eye. Oh um, my God. Carol, your hair looks so nice today. Thank you. Let me tell you why. Because I owe each and every one of you an apology, except for the person who complained. Now, (laughs) I, you guys, I was watching our video from like this week or last week, whatever. I I never get through all of them either, which kind of tells me something. But um, I was like, dear God, stop touching your hair. Like it was annoying. I was annoying me. And I know I've said this before. So I was like, that's it. I am doing my hair and it's going to be shellacked with hairspray not going to touch it. So that's where it is. And then Tracy tells me like two minutes ago that somebody complained that we touch our hair too much. I don't know if she was being nice to me and not telling me that it says Carol. No, it's not. It, and more than one person said, we touch our hair and, too much. You quit playing and with I your was hair. Like, Tracy never touches her hair. I'm the one the whole time that's like, because it, it's, this is my heavy side and it hangs in my face and then I have to do this. And then you look and Tracy's right. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm the little picture of me is this big. So I can't see if it looks bad. Oh, well, you I... guys, try being my age, I'm sorry, but I'm sick of looking like crap. All right. I put on a couple pounds. I'm trying to take them off. I'm trying to look decent on these things. Ever watch our videos from like three years ago and go, oh, I look so much better. <laughs> That's because it was three years ago. I will say this with the hair thing, you guys. And if it's the younger set, that's like, quit touching your hair, quit playing with your hair. Like, we get an hour into these. We've had a glass of wine. And kind of the hot flashes start coming. (laughs) An hour? I shouldn't have worn this. Or like, you know, I have a light on here. It gets a little hot. This room can get a little hot. You know? And all of a sudden, I'm like... (sighs) And then, you know, you just got to, like, pull your hair off sometimes. So what did I do for all that? I wore, like, this, you know, winter ski cap because, um, you know, do I look like a hipster? I feel like Marty from Greece, but instead of new glasses, I just got this hipster hat for school. Does that make me look cooler? <laughs> I wasn't wearing my hipster hat. <laughs> um, no, I look like that girl that's, if you watch Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, that girl that always wears the hipster hat with um, the curly black hair and sometimes there's blue in it too. Um, I don't But no, that. I feel, I feel, I thought the same thing. Like this will keep me from touching my hair all the time and then maybe people will like us again. <laughs> <laughs> no, people really like us. People like us. They really you like us. They um, really, really like us. The comments are so, like the comments this season, you guys, you guys are just like, are doing an awesome job on YouTube and on Twitter. Twitter is on fuego. On fuego. Um, God, you know, I just want to be able to sit down and read all this stuff. It's so great. Like all of the insightful comments are so, 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 so great. And you know, the one couple that are a little like mean or whatever, whatever. I mean, we can make fun of them or we can ignore them or we could like turn the other cheek, whatever. And the fact is, is that like of all of the comments, I would say I can count on this one hand that counts down to um, when we start that the number of them. So, you know, that's saying something. Um, do I even need to ask you what you're drinking? No. Um, okay. So we'll um, I was going to, dr- I found a new wine that I really liked um, that the chef the other night that I was telling you about. Oh, tell that story uh, a little bit. Or do you um, want to? No, let's not even get into that. But uh, this sh- lovely chef that I met the other night, I'll tell you guys what. Um, if you ever watch Gordon Ramsay's 24 Hours to Hell and Back, um, watch the one from Blend on Maine in Manasquan, New Jersey. That is Chef Lou. And I have proof that those shows are totally like, not scripted, but they totally have to tell a tale. They need a, a good angle. This is the most 
lovely, sweet man. Now, I don't know what he's like in the kitchen, but he's a lovely, lovely person. And he treated my children wonderfully. And that show made him look so awful. My kids were afraid to meet him. <laughs> but um, he gave me a uh, some of this wine that, oh my God, it was so good. And I took a picture of it. So I know what to buy. And had my week not gotten crazy, I would have had some for tonight. But anyway, Santa Margarita. Do you um do you know what it's called, or do you forget? What the other? I one? will I will look it up. I took a picture. Tracy, what are you drinking? Um, I'm drinking some more um of the um special Groupon collection. Oh, did you <laughs> the get Groupon that collection? Did you get from <laughs> Ferg? <laughs> It took me two times to realize what he was saying. Did you did you get that right after you got home from Tajé and Jean Claude Benet? Oh my god! Now my like throat is. <clears throat> Sorry, all the laughing is making me like um cough. Um yes, this is from the Group Home Collection, and it is Villa Amoroso. Um, oh, like Marianne. Like Marianne Amoroso, and it's just some sort of white blend, I think. Um, it's. Bianco, Toscano, Lo, something like that. That's what it looks like. It's Italian. You know, it's Italian. It's all good, but it's fine. Is it's it nice, a dessert it's, wine? It's a nice drinking wine. It's a nice drinking wine. Um, anything Here else to report before we... Oh, what? so yeah, what is it? It's a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. <clears throat> I tend to not like... I tend to not love Sauvignon Blancs because... I'm not a big champagne girl, and um, I, you know I don't like the bubbles. And sh and Chardonnay Blanc sort of leans in that direction. But you know, so. a nice like, crisp Sauvignon Blanc on a hot summer day, like a really cold one. Is yes, but I don't see the I don't get bubbles. It's it's I, not fizzy like it. champagne, but it's more it's more in that family than you know. I love it. You know, that's why I'm. That's why I switched to Pinot. Because I used to be the shardy girl like you. And then mm -hmm. I switched to Pinot. But that's even more light in the summer, like you said. And it's very fruity. It's very great fruity. Right. And yet, you will try a big oaky shardy that I'm drinking. And you'll be like, this is really good. I don't know why I stopped drinking this. So. I drank shardy for a long time. <laughs> Let's be honest, you guys. I'll pretty much drink anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, you know what? You, you know remember? what? You know what? I'm not going to talk about myself like that. Because I just whipped out this bottle. And it had only that much out of it. And I went, oh, my God, I haven't had any of it since last Thursday when I opened it. And I was like, ooh, should I be drinking this? I mean, clearly it was in the refrigerator. And I pulled all the air out of it with that thing. But still. Mm -hmm. Now, I opened some yesterday, even though I was not going to. But then I had to work like 12 hours. And, um, I, and I basically like ate my lunch and my dinner at my desk because my husband is away. He's in Florida visiting his parents um, this weekend. So, yes. So, basically, I lived in this office room. Somebody on some Twitter or Facebook or YouTube or something said we should do like a, a video or Facebook Live or something of the rooms where we video. So we'll do that someday. That's that's kind of, that's a good idea. Although this room is such a mess that um, I don't know why people would want to see it. Oh Let's jump God. in. <clears throat> Let's jump in because, you know, we, after all, um, are here to talk about Outlander. Episode 504, 405, 504. Um, the company we keep. Carol, any general thoughts before we dive in? Um, I live. I liked it a lot. <clears throat> um, I wish I took notes. Um, someday you will, and I won't, and it'll be down as up. You know down. what? I love to take notes, but it is very hard to get to. I don't know how you do it. You're so busy, but you can watch it twice. Like I have a hard time with that. I just have to like I, I like to watch it once, not thinking about anything, any any notes, <clears throat> any observations, any jokes. Nope, nope, nope. I just want to watch it. But like as I'm watching it, you know, things will be percolating in my head so that I'll know. Sort of. <clears throat> sorry, uh, we laughed at the very beginning, and now I'm all flummy. Um, I'll know the direction where I want to go. With stuff. And I'll notice more things, too. I noticed more things on the second viewing, but... I should have taken notes because I had it in my head that, no, I'm going to just watch it. Well, meanwhile, I got stopped a million times. I should have just stopped and written the damn notes because usually that's what I do. I take notes while I'm watching the first time, and then I'm like, I hate this. I want to watch it first. 
So I think I need to just, I don't know what I need to do. All right. It's just, I, it's hard. <clears throat> um, I thought this one was good. Um, it was good. It's another one of these episodes where um, it's very much re- from the book. Um, some parts are not. Um, what was the part that was not from the book? Um, I can't oh, the broadsheet remember. Part. I don't think, because <clears throat> we found out now why, you know, Fergus was all like, oh, let me take this one. No, let me take this paper. No, let me take this, let me take this paper. Da, 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 da. Right. We found out. Right. I don't think that that ever happened in the book. I think that that's a, you know, and I think that there'll be repercussions for that too. Um, right. But a lot of it was from the book. Um, the whole Jamie and Claire talk in the woods about the baby and do they want to keep it, blah, 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 straight from the book. Um, my big thing with this episode, and it was, and I said it last week too, like, I would never in a million years have dreamed that they would spend an entire episode in Brownsville. One twelfth of this season was spent in Brownsville worrying about, like, friggin' Isaiah Morton and Alicia. And I'm just like, maybe there really nothing happens in this book. Like maybe, uh, you know, maybe that's why I, that's my least favorite because there's nothing of any like real, you know, substance that happens. Maybe that's why we're spending an entire episode in Brownsville. I don't know. Well, I mean, I can think of a bunch of things that are yeah. episode worthy. Um, quite a few things. But I don't know. I'm starting to think about like, are they going to leave out huge swaths of the plot? Because also, they do keep people keep saying that, from what they've heard, that elements of six are of book six are going to be in here too. So it's like, right? Is there nothing? I think you're forgetting some stuff though, because <clears throat> with people from Brownsville. No, 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 no. Just that go on in this book. Well, no, no. Oh, no. I'm not. I mean, I can I, think of three things offhand that are huge. I can think of three things. I can think of four things. I can think of five things. I can think of seven. <laughs> Name those things. <laughs> <laughs> Turn on the spoiler alert. Um, you know, I, we might have to do a, spoil, a quick spoiler alert. Um, let's not do it right now because, you know, people, you know, if they haven't already left from our hair and wine and talk, they'll <laughs> leave when we put a spoiler alert on. Um, but we'll, 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 let's, let's touch on that. Maybe we'll do a little spoiler section today because that, that was, that's, that's my impression of this episode. It's like, it was a good episode. Um, I love how it was used to develop this conflict between Jamie and um, Roger. Oh man, that was rough. That was, that was very rough. And, and I'm sure the conflict exists in the book, but I think, I think it's better portrayed in the show. Um, you really get a sense of how, how Roger is just like, he hates me. And how I, and I did like. And last night he pretty much was. (laughs) I know. But I mean, like, you know, and I I mean, we'll get to it, but like, you know, both when, when, when Jamie was like, well, what'd you do that for? And Roger was like, cause I, cause of this, like everything Roger was saying was completely plausible and everything Jamie was saying was completely plausible. And they just weren't like really like, like considering each other's perspectives. And finally, Jamie did at the end when he was like, yeah, you know, I made, made you a captain, but I didn't actually train you or whatever. So I guess like taking Claire back with the Beardsley boys, maybe the Beardsley twins will train you along the way or something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how that's going to train you, but whatever. Um, but but that whole conflict is really fascinating between the two of them. Um, let me ask you this. Why did Jamie... Oh, I totally knew in the Easter egg too. Why oh, did Jamie... If you think about it, if you were, you were that like, I can't believe I'm going to stick up for Roger and like get on Jamie. But if you were that concerned about what was going on, you know, why did you have to run and get the indentured stuff now? Why did you have to get the papers, get the papers now? Like why, why, what, why didn't you just like say, all right, well, let's go on and go about our business and then we'll come back on the way back and get the papers. No, I get that. If they're carting those boys around and somebody shows up and they're like, hey, that's the Beardsley boys and they belong to the Beardsley guy. Jamie has to have the proof. He has to have, you know, it's like trying to get around a a country without a passport. There's only so long before someone's going to catch up to you and be like, where's your passport? 
You know, they right. need their paper. So I think that's, I don't, I didn't have a problem with that. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, but why did the, he was sending them back to the ridge anyway. I guess that's why, because he was sending them back <coughs> to the ridge. But they were already at the ridge. Like, who, the beard? They well, were already at the ridge. No, I mean, Josiah was at the ridge, but then he went to go get Kezi. Really? They explained, remember, they explained that last week that he went to go rescue Kezi because now Josiah has a home and he's settled and now he's going to get his brother back. And that's where they found them. So, and how did Josiah get away from the guy? And he, he ran still away like was a year indentured. Ago. He ran. He, well, he just hid in the woods, I guess. I don't know. So yeah, Jamie I mean, didn't have a problem with that. Yeah, that's, it's true. Well, Jamie didn't know about it. Yeah, that's kind of that's. I mean, Josiah was all you know. You one would think he he would be a little more secretive, but he was all like, "Oh, hey, you know, no, Laird." Honest, I love those boys. Laird, Jamie, um, can your wife heal me? Because I have a sore throat. And I'm a really good hunter. And Lizzie's hot. Um, but no mention of like, oh, and by the by, can we keep this on the down low? Because I'm, you know, an indentured, uh, uh, you know, a, 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 a wanted man. Or boy. I still don't see why Jamie couldn't have just gone <clears throat> on the way back. And if Beardsley gave him a problem, say, sorry, dude. Like, I was getting gathering militia. Come fight with us. Well, I don't oh, think it would, I don't think it would be Beardsley that. that would give him the problem. I think it would be somebody else that knows Beardsley and is like, "Oh wait, aren't those and, his servants?" And, and, and then you can say, that? "I'm a wee bit too busy getting getting gathering men." And, and he could that probably was not say, my like, "Number one priority." Yeah, and he probably, and, 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 and he should have sent. Okay, he should have sent the Beardsleys back to the ridge, and then he should have gone about his business. And nobody, none the wiser. But instead, he goes back. He spends all that time there with Claire, which was a fabulous episode. But then he comes back, and he doesn't like the way uh, his subordinate has done something. And he has not trained his subordinate whatsoever, who is from another time frame and and another time. And he doesn't like the way he did something. And he's going to, like, give him a hard time. Like, uh uh-uh. You don't get to give me a hard time. um, He realized that in the end. I think he realized that. I mean, I I sort of get his perspective, too, when it's like, you have to, like, you just have to, sometimes you just have to delegate, you know? Even though you're like, I don't even want to know what this person is going to do. Like, I don't even want to know how this person is going to handle this thing. But I don't have time to handle it, and I just have to let them go and do it. And not worry okay. about what okay. they're going to do. Okay, okay, and, okay. And did Jamie ever tell Roger how he should have handled it? Like, I mean, after the fact, he did. What did he say? He was like, yeah, he was saying, like, you just, you stood down. Like, why didn't you, you know, if you had, like, you know, gotten everyone together, you would outnumber them and they would have, and, and take, you know, seize them or whatever. And Roger was like, well, no, I made the choice to stand down and keep everybody safe. That was my job. And, you know, Jamie was like, well, what are you, what were you going to do when the casts ran out? And Roger was like, well... I figured you'd show up before they did. And, <laughs> yeah. and it was true. He did. And you did. So, so both I, of them I were guess, right. Both I, of them I were guess that right. But we didn't hear Jamie say, here's what you should have done. First, you should have done this. Then you should have done this. Then you should have done this. But well, I mean, you know he I mean? was saying that, but just not in those words. He was, instead of saying you should have done, he was saying, why didn't you do? I mean, it's the same thing. Okay. And, and, it is, but, it, and, if anything, it shows that it, it shows the time, the difference in the time. Why can't I think of these words anymore? Every time I talk about the time. It's two different times. The future. The future. It shows that like things are different now. And, you know, we're not always traipsing around in the woods with our guns fighting each other. So right. you stand down, Jamie. <laughs> I, you stand I, down. I, no, I won't stand down. You stand down. I just love Roger and there is an element to Roger in the show that was sorry, talking about the book that was not in the book that I love, which is we get to see him. And again, it's just because of the screen. We get to see him be sarcastic and have self deprecating humor all the time and be like, Oh God, I suck. You know what I mean? Which he Uh did that in the book, but it's just so, I don't know. He's not quite so pathetic. In the show, he's just like any of us would be. Like, I don't know what I'm doing here. I think he's a little more pathetic in the um, show. It's funny. What? I said, I think he's a little more pathetic in the show. 
I think people, you know, it goes back to that first episode of the season and everyone was like, oh, well, we have to put a militia together and like all go to war. And, Roger. <laughs> oh, well, we have to like, you know, do the spring planting and like plow the fields and, oh. Right. <laughs> well, well, maybe he can go babysit with Fergus. Until Roger, like, totally, you know, smacked down um, Andrew Costa. And then that, then we were like, okay, Roger knows how to do something. He knows how to shove bitch up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, shove it. <laughs> let's start at the beginning because we are, like, all over the place here. Um, but that's a good conversation because I really, I did want to have that conversation because I, that's probably my favorite part of the episode was that whole Roger Jamie dynamic. Um, all right, so it is it is five oh four the company we keep. There is no cold opening after last week when we're like, I bet we're getting a cold opening every episode this season. No, there was no cold opening this season to prove us wrong. Um, I know they just start singing, and I'm like, what? About what? I noticed on my second viewing that Ed Spli- Spli- I can't say his name. Ed Spilliers, Ed Spilliers, Ed Spilliers, Ed Spilliers was in Britney the starting. Spears. And that would have helped me immensely had I noticed it the first time because then I would have totally gotten the Easter egg and not like, you know, had to get it when Bree was talking about finding the coin in the little baby. All right. Thing. Say that again because I'm sorry. I interrupted you being a wise guy and I don't know if, if everybody heard what you were saying about Ed Spilliers. Uh, yes, he was in the starting and I didn't notice that. And had I noticed that, I would have. I would have put two and two together about the Easter egg because I did not. Oh, I did not. I, d- you didn't No, I totally did. Cause he had that hole with his pants. Well, and I and also the, got and the it ruffles again. and he was all done up like a gentleman last week. Didn't think about it. Okay. okay. Anyway. So yeah. So Ed's plea layers is in the starting. So are, um, Chris Larkin and Ned Dennehy, who play the Brown Brothers. But I had to look that up because I wasn't sure who they were. Um, a writer, how do I know what, How do I know the brother who showed up later? I was like, oh, my God, I totally know him. Yeah, they're kind of like, they, well, you know what? They look They look sort of like, what's the actor's name? Like, they're just, they're all, like, there's this type of actor who's always in, like, you know, 18th, 19th century stuff. Um Oh, what the hell is the guy's name? Um, he played Mr. Peasley on the on How the West Was Won. Um, oh my god! I what the don't know. His name? I don't know, but I just realized where I think I know him from. Do I know him from Turn? I don't know. We can look it up on IMDb. Um, maybe after this, after this, after we're done, and we can like put it in Twitter or something. I don't know. In- Put it in the Twitter. Put it in the Twitter. Um, okay. Right, going. So they're the Brown Brothers. Uh, the writer for this episode is Barbara Stepanski, um, who I don't think wrote last season. I think this is her first crack at it. Um, you can tell all the writers are like, the direction they're giving the season is, here's the book. <laughs> Lift out <Yeah>, well. Right. <laughs> Plagiarize away. <laughs> No, Diana it's, doesn't care. No, in in in, in, a, in our world, we call it adapt. Um, no, and I mean, like, it makes everybody happy if they use all the, the source material. So it's all good. Um, and Jamie Payne again, once again, directed this one. And then the Easter egg again is the guy is a guy doing finger tricks with the um, coin. Um, I didn't tell it was it was Stephen Bonnet the first time around. The only time I saw I knew because the second time was a that Ed Spoolers is in the um, starting. And when I freeze framed the shot to um, get the name of the writer, it was the shot and you could see his ring, like that, that sort of like brass knuckly kind of ring that he has. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, all right. Yeah, see, fine, okay. Um, okay. Our opening shot is Roger and company are riding to Brownsville. Um and we see a shot of the beer. I, I just want you to know that I'm looking while you're talking. Oh. So, all right. Um, so we can see a shot of the Beardsleys. The Beardsleys, I mean, I know they're twins, but do they have to look exactly alike right down to the like the wigs and the fringy they bangs? Don't, though. They don't, though. It's the expression. Well, yes. Josiah, he's like, he's like, and who's the other one? 
Kezia. 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 Not Kezia. 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 That we called Kezia. He is like. <laughs> and I mean, I answered my own question because I think they do have to look alike. They just look really alike. They're like, they are Winklevi all the way. They are Winklevi and <laughs> shit out of this. Of course I'm not saying that, sir. I'm saying that. <laughs> um, but maybe, maybe the wigs are not very good and that's what's bugging me to see them, to, you know, you know, two, two, two times as bad. Um, I don't know. Oh, see, that doesn't bother me at all. Whatever. I don't know. So Roger's like, hello, the house. We have a hello, the house, two episodes in a row, and we are happy as clams and khakis. It's awesome. Um, so, I know. I just love that. And so right from the start, you see that, that Roger is just a big doof with all this because Roger's like, hello, the house. We're here. Anyone here? Anyone home? And yeah, Fergus hey, is like, hey, uh, <laughs> no, hey, <laughs> Fergus is like, um, um, Raj, look over there. It's a gun. It's pointed at us. Probably Why isn't Fergus the captain? This was a good Fergus episode. Do you agree? Why do you think I was like, oh, I got stuff to say. <laughs> Why isn't Fergus the captain? Um, good call. I take not only a totally a total novice who doesn't know how to fire a gun but but one from another time who's a historian it's on a desk why do you put him in charge okay i have two things to say about that why would you take fergus who you've been you've been training fergus maybe he figures that the men aren't going to take fergus seriously I don't know. so i think that fergus has his own issues in jamie's eyes no i don't know no no i don't well they're not issues i don't think jamie sees fergus as a leader i think jamie sees fergus as a second so jamie knows that fergus is going to do everybody's bidding or do his bidding but I don't know, I don't think that he thinks of Fergus as, you know, a commander of men. Both because Fergus is good at, like, doing other things. Fergus is good at, you know, sneaking around in the shadows and finding out information and, you know, whatever. And also because Fergus is just a little too French, maybe. I don't know, you know? Oh, Fergus, you're so French. You're so French. Um, but the other, but the thing with Roger is I think that Jamie, in a, I think Jamie feels kind of beholden to Brianna. You know, Brianna is his daughter. Roger is his wife. Therefore, Roger is not like Roger outranks him in the Fergus in the family, but he's, I don't know, maybe he does because of his position as Brianna's husband. Well, you know, he's, he's more, he's, he's still... more in the circle of trust, as they say in, um, as you know, Robert De Niro says in that movie, in uh, in the, the Fockers or the Meet the Parents, he's, in, he's 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 deep into the circle of trust. You know, like who would yes. Robert De Niro choose to be in charge? Would he choose Ben Stiller or would he choose you know, like kid who was always at their house and they finally just stopped at him because <laughs> they didn't know what to do with him? <laughs> Did I not clearly explain the circle of trust to you, Greg? <laughs> You know, Owen Wilson or whatever, whatever, whichever Wilson it is in that movie. No, it's not Owen. It's the other one. Uh, uh, it's Owen Luke Wilson. Wilson. No, it's, you're thinking it's, Luke Wilson. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 you're right. I'm right. It's Owen, Owen Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. Or twins, would it be Owen we Wilson? We got the twins of some B. <laughs> she was a Tonka. <laughs> um, so I, I think love that that's a lot about it. I think, I think he kind of feels put in a corner a little bit because... This is Brianna's husband. And he can't just be like, yeah, Brianna's husband. Um, I know you're, like, married to my dear daughter, but, like, yeah, no, you're not going to work out as a leader. He can't do that, you know? Um, so. You know what? I think he can. Because I'll tell you what. I think, number one, it's uh, he feels bad for him. He's like, you know, um, you beat up my face. You grab my nuts. Like, first of all, I think it's, you know, oops, I, I shouldn't have. T <laughs> what he did caused Roger a lot of strife. But at the same time, you're leading men with guns here, dude. Right. What is he doing? Right. Oh, like, so do you wait? You think Jamie feels guilty because of how he sold Roger to the Indians, and now now he feels like he has to make it up to Roger? I'm going to disagree with no. that. No. Oh. 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 Um. 
I think that's more plausible than your Bree's husband. Therefore, I'm going to put you in charge of everything that you know nothing about. Like, why didn't he put him? Okay, I'm sorry. I, you know what? This is one of those things that you just have to suspend disbelief because there are plenty of other men in that group that also probably like there's there's got to be another one or two guys. Right, too. right, right. Well, I mean, you hear like in the, later in the episode, you hear people call him a do. So these are guys that were at our sphere with him. You know? Roger's going to lead you. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry, but just to put Roger in charge, I guess he figured they weren't going to have any, come across any, anything. Uh, It makes no sense to me. It makes zero sense to me why Roger's in charge, but it doesn't have to make sense to me why Roger's in charge. Right. Right. All right. Um, Talk for a second, because I need to look at this. Um, what are you looking at? You guys, what does she need to look at? I just looked at the IMDb, um, cast and there's literally four people showing for this episode. So, um, I don't know who that guy was, but I was trying to figure it out, but interested to know what you guys think about Roger leading the pack when he is from 200 years in the future and has no idea what he's doing. Um, I don't know. I just, I don't really get it. But at the same time, like I said, I don't have to get it. It doesn't matter if I get it. It's, you know, what kind of storyline would they have if it was somebody else? They would have known what to do. But I'm also like, what should he have done? Like, I guess you don't just like hand over all your whiskey, but I don't Um, know. I don't really know what they Yeah. I mean, Fergus did not seem to be buying into that, but Fergus is very, very, Fergus, Fergus is very um, diplomatic. You know, Fergus, you can tell, is, like, not really buying into that plan, but he's like, okay, you're in charge. Great. Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, Fergus is being very respectful, though. I mean, here's, yes. here's Roger comes out of nowhere, doesn't even know how to hold a gun, practically, and he's in charge, and Fergus is helping him out. No, my lord. You know what I mean? You want to do this? <laughs> You want to hold to he the gun with me, right Lord. He doesn't call me Lord. He wouldn't call me Lord. I, I know. I, I know, but it's Fergus, so you got to say me Lord. But I just, oh, Fergus. Yeah, Fergus, uh, this, Fergus had a good episode. Um, this is the very first time that I felt like Fergus was in town. <laughs> <laughs> Holy um, mackerel. some good Lord Fergus moments, uh, which I wrote down. So, yeah, so the guns are trained on them, and then they're like, you know, bring us Isaiah Morton, basically. And you find out that Isaiah Morton has, like, been uh, keep spending some time with the, with the daughter of the head brown, Miss Alicia. Um, and uh, now, and as a result, he has ruined any chance that she would have to marry, like, I don't know, some rich guy that they're trying to arrange. Um so yeah, so Roger's oh, I think like, it was arranged already, and they had to tell him. Sorry. So Roger's like, "Yeah, get the whiskey out." Why did they tell him? What they tell him? They're like, "Um, well, no, she's not. She's refusing to marry you, and she's tainted." And so he's probably okay. Like, first of all, honestly, I think that there was no no one gave a shit if she was refusing. Was well, that's true. That no, I think they were probably like, she's like, um, you know. I'm I am soiled. I'm damaged goods. Yeah. And I don't think they had anybody out on the, the foothills of Carolina uh checking the sheets like they did in the <laughs> <laughs> Um Okay. So we are back to the big house and Bree Bree and Mrs. Bug and Jemmy all went into town. Why did you why did Bree if there's like seven thousand people over at the big house couldn't Bree just, like, leave Jemmy there? I mean, wouldn't it be easier to do that than to, like, haul him into town with Mrs. Bug? Just, um, you know, just thoughts. But then again, it had to happen that way because, you know. Jemmy's, Jemmy's little, right? How old is Jemmy at this point? Well, <laughs> old enough to walk. <laughs> I'm going to peg Jemmy at about 10 months. Maybe 11 months. Eh, 10 months, 11 months. No, so, Jemmy's still uh, nursing. And, oh, and she, okay. All right. Eh, um, good call. Good call. And, and she's from, okay. you know, the future. So she's probably like, you know, F Timmy. I'm not handing him over to some. No, that's a good call. That's a good, very good call. All right. I, I, I buy that. Good. Um, 
So they ascertain that there's a coin in the cradle. They, Mrs. Bug, and finally we see Mrs. Bug for more than two seconds, and Mr. Bug too, which is um, a lot of fun. Um, Mrs. Bug makes me nervous. Mrs. Bug, like, I like just, Mrs. Bug. I like the actress. That's their good casting on that. Um, yes, she seems like she has a lot of like disdain for everything going on around her. <laughs> get that sense at all i got but that. you sort of get the feeling like they're back at castle leoc too like, Exa- well yeah, yeah like- she's very much like what's her name at castle leoc um she doesn't yeah. like the irish you know that's the only thing i saw disdain for um yeah. but anyway they talk too much tracy those irish they talk too much i know gab 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 um this is why our videos go on i know they do we're, we're 50% <laughs> our half irishness um <laughs> So, yeah, so Mrs. Bug tells the story. Oh, some guy came and, like, gave him a, a coin and said, he's so cute. Does he take after his father or his mother? And Bree's like, oh, that's weird. And she's like, I know. I would have noticed more, but he's Irish, and you can't understand a word they say. And Bree's like, dun, dun, dun. Bree's like, oh, what do you look like? Did he have a scar? And Mrs. Bug was like, uh, I don't know. He's a fancy guy, whatever. I mean, whatever. But and, like, in my version, know who it is. Mrs. Bug, in my version, Mrs. Bug would have been like, I don't know if he had a scar, but he was hot. He hot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> if it was Tracy Bug, um, it would have been like, it been like, yeah, I remember what he looked like because he was smoking. There was a tinge <laughs> of evil about him, but I couldn't deal with that because it was just too hot. <laughs> I'm picturing Mrs. Bug going. <laughs> I would hit that. <laughs> Don't tell Arch. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, Arch. I, I <laughs> Don't tell Arch. But I'd get some. I would get some bug spray on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that bug spray any day. <laughs> Just um, move on up to the big house while everybody's away because, you know, we're so far. Like, we'll just go there. So I, ha- I have this question I have. Like, how many people are living in the big house? Who the frick is at the big house? That's what I want to know, like, too. Here's the thing. Aren't Claire and Jamie currently sleeping in the kitchen of the big house because nowhere else in the big house is inhabitable? Or habitable? No, that was before. I think time has passed. That's why I want to know how old Jenny was. Yeah. No time has passed. Like a week has passed. I am I like? It's weird to me. Like, but who's living there? Like, Marsh, the the bugs are living there. I guess Marshley and Fergus are living there. Plus their whole brood. Um. Plus Lizzie. Plus a, an assortment of you know stable boys and builders. And well, that's how Jamie likes it. He's used to it. That's like Lolly Brock. He's got a million people around all I mean, the time. This is that's like how a regular bed and breakfast here. You know? Um, and then again, like, if Jamie and Claire are sleeping in the kitchen, where are they all sleeping? I don't know. Things I wonder when I watch the show. Things that make you go, hmm. hmm. All right, we're back in Brownsville, and it is whiskey time. Um, they are popping the cork on the whiskey. Lionel, I guess it's Lionel. It's going to be Lionel because I don't know which one is which. And so whatever. Um, so Lionel's like, yeah, it's a, and the whiskey is dripping out of the thingy and they like flash him on everybody's face. Like, <laughs> I know, I know. I was like, <laughs> you know, they're like, they're freaking out. Everybody's wasting the whiskey. Um, so Lionel is pissed off at Isaiah Morton because he ruined his daughter's match. That's when we find it out. And so he they're soiled him. his daughter. Right. So they're gonna take him to like their little dungeon, whatever. So then we uh, meet up with Jamie and Claire on the road towards Brownsville, and they just love that little baby. That wee Bonnie is just like I you know, want that. I want that little baby. She is just a little nugget. She is just so cute. Um, they're just loving her. Um, and they're gonna, the plan is that the goat's milk is, is all right for now, but they're gonna have to get somebody, they're gonna have to find somebody to, um, milk the baby, for lack of a better word, um, uh, when they get to Brownsville. And, but they're oh like, no problem, they'll find somebody, you know. And I'm just hearing the pediatrician and, like, going, what? Like, you know, you don't give a baby milk for, until they're a year old. 
and they're given this like like infant goat's milk. Yeah, Carol, they're like drinking all over the place. Claire's for God's sake, Claire's like you know, oh, Kezi with a hundred and four fever, like make sure to drink pr- plenty of water or ale. <laughs> How is she yeah. telling him to do that? Like she's from the future. She should know. Like you know, it's not feed, you know feed a cold. You know, get a fever drunk. It's <laughs> yeah, but she's from the forties, so like, well, it was the sixties when she came back. Yeah. But either way, yeah. Well, it's not now when we'd be like, oh my god. Well, no, I mean that's that's for when you're pregnant, but what, but when you're sick, like I don't know. I mean, I guess uh, back yeah, then. But she's. I'll tell you what exactly what it is. She doesn't want him to get dehydrated, although alcohol is going to dry you out too. So I don't really understand that either. But I'm guessing she just wants something. You know, like sometimes every once in a while, if your kid is like that sick, the pediatrician's like, look, you know, I don't want them drinking whatever, but get what you can down. Get them a slug of whiskey so they'll go to sleep. They also say that in Meet the Fockers. Put a little, put a little rum on the baby's teeth for the teething. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, so they find out they're back to Brownsville and some, some, um, some of the militia have deserted. They're gone. And Roger's like, really? What happened? And Fergus was, Fergus, ever the diplomat is like, well, they really weren't too thrilled with what you pulled yesterday. I agree with you. You know, I, I, Fergus would be very good on Survivor because he knows how to play all of the different angles. Fergus, right. now, I agree with you. But right. they didn't, and they felt like he didn't respect them, and so off they went. And Roger's like, mm-hmm. so Jamie and Claire roll into town, and what's Roger doing? He is doing what Roger does, which is being the lead singer of the dreamy Roger band. Um, he's like, he's being Leaf Roger Garrett. <laughs> um, he is just singing his little heart out. Um, and yeah, that's where I was asking about Josiah and Kaziah, like just looking, I mean, I know they have to look alike, but they look so much alike that, mm, I don't know. Uh, so Josiah wants, you know, so, so Jamie tells Josiah, yeah, they're free. They got the papers, whatever. And Josiah wants to go to fight. And Jamie's like, yeah, I don't think so. I didn't like haul my ass all the way to like crazy town to get your papers only for you to get killed in some battle. No, you're going back. You're, you're, <laughs> you write that down. That's good. <laughs> um, you're going, you're, you're not, you know, no, no, it's not happening. So he's, you know, just, I, it's fine with that, whatever. Um, so Jamie and Claire go in the tavern. Um, Fergus, again, Fergus is building his case for like, come get back into our hearts and minds. Um, he makes the funny little joke about he sees the baby. He's like, "Oh, my lord, you work so fast!" Oh, 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 oh wee wee! <laughs> and we're like, "Okay, Fergus, keep going." Keep, you, 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 yeah, uh huh, uh huh. I was like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" I think Fergus is back. <laughs> um. So Claire brings the baby over to the Browns, you know, the head Browns house, and. The daughter-in-law just had a baby, so she will nurse the baby, and um, she thought thinks the baby's really cute, whatever. Um, so Roger updates Jamie, and Jamie is feeling rather frustrated at this point. And so there's a little running joke where where Roger is very into explaining, um, you know, etymology to Jamie and um, the lexicon of words. Did you know, da? That, um, I don't even know. The, the word regulator comes from the Latin reg and the Greek later. <laughs> and Jamie's like, uh, <laughs> I just can't with that. Um, he doesn't really care about word origins. Um, and he's very pissed that the men left. So, and he's very, so that, so I guess, uh, uh, Roger takes him to the dungeon and Jamie's like, you let them like take, like capture one of your men? Like, what are you crazy? Um, and Roger's, and this, again, this was a great conversation. Roger was like, I did it to keep the peace. And Jamie's like, your men left because you betrayed their trust. And Jamie's like, I kept, I want, or Roger was like, I, 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 that's what I did to keep them safe. Both of them had good reasons for doing what they would have done or did, but neither one of them can accept or, 
or acknowledge that the other's reasons might have some merit and is fascinating. Um, I don't think that, I don't think Roger doesn't think that Jamie's reasons have some merit. I think Roger feels like a dumbass. He's like, once again, I did it wrong. And this is Jamie freaking Fraser. And I just totally screwed up. Yeah, I think Roger feels like... No, but fun. I mean, I then, think Roger defends himself, though. I don't think Roger's well, like, does, you're right, do, also, you're right, Jamie. I, you know, or Colonel Fraser, I I screwed up again. No, he pushes back on Jamie. Pushes back, but the bottom line is he knows Jamie is, what, are you going to question Jamie? Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, he says it to Claire later. Does he say it to Claire? I forget. He says it to somebody. I don't know. Um, I think Claire. You know, I can't do anything right. But in the moment, he pushes way back. I thought he pushed back pretty hard, and I was impressed. Um, but again, you know, Jamie's not listening to him. He Roger's not thinking. Roger's just like either pushing back or being like, "Poor me," but not really thinking about. Oh, hmm. I, all right, I can see from his perspective that that might not have been the best thing to do. Um. So okay, so Isaiah. Uh, has a little, little confession time for Isaiah. Um, Isaiah's very good, by the way, and I, I'm blanking on the actor's name. He's on Twitter. I know I've seen him. He might have even liked a tweet of ours, and I don't remember. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny, because that's what I was thinking, too. I was like, is he one of these guys who, also, do they use guy the same guys in, like, different capacities? No, like, think, he's the guy that I thought looked a little like Andrew Shue. Maybe you don't see it. I don't know. I don't know. Don't get me off on the Andrew Shoe t- tangent because next thing you know, I'll be talking Melrose. Um, so, you know, he was very good in this episode, though. Um, he was totally good. Um, so, unfortunately, he's already married. Oops. Um, and so Jamie... It was so Shakespeare in love. I don't remember who was married in that. Like, he's married. What's his name's married in that? Shakespeare? Yes. And he's married, but he only married her because he had to, and now he loves her, and what's he going to do, but... I don't remember that. I don't... Is that why they end up not being together? I kind of forget. I don't know. I don't think Shakespeare... I don't... I don't think Shakespeare was married in that. Maybe he was. I mean, he's married in real life. I just had to, Unless I'm getting it mixed up with... (laughs) Elizabeth. <laughs> I just had to learn that. Um, I just, or I just had to do that for something at work today. So that's how I know he's married. Um, I had to do a whole lesson on Shakespeare. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, very. Yeah, cool. I read this whole biography of Shakespeare. He he married his wife's name is Anne. I was gonna say Anne Hathaway, and it might be actually. <laughs> um, I kind of forget. Um. But it's very, it is so very anyway. Shakespeare in love that like all men played the parts and like these little kids played the women's parts because their voices had to change and stuff like that. It's very cool. Um, okay. So Jamie's all like, you know what? You made your vow, this vow to your wife and you broke it and what? And I'm thinking to myself, mm, look in a mirror, Jamie, because, um, you know, you sort of did the same thing, but okay, whatever. Um, you know, with, with, um, with leg hair. Even though it was totally warranted, but no, he was ma- he was married to Leg Hair. I mean, it was he, I mean it's a little different because he was he was married to Claire before Leg Hair, so that she probably two hundred years in the future. That probably negated that that, but yeah, and that, that comes I, up later. No, that comes up that comes up at the end when Isaiah is like, you know, um, we were married for two years, but there was no love there, and we didn't live together. And Jamie's like, oh. Yeah, I know this sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah, I'm starting to get it. Um, so anyway, Claire, we're back at the the kitchen, the brown kitchen, and Claire's telling the whole beers the tale, whatever. Um, and Mrs. Brown is like, "Oh well, Mrs. Beardsley's not the first one to find herself in a bad situation." And looks over <laughs> at Alicia. <laughs> Alicia's like, oh. um. And Claire spills drink all over the place, and it's all over this broadsheet. And everyone's like, "Oh, well, you know, good riddance to that broadsheet because there's all they're printing. They print all sorts of crap these days, all sorts of fake news all over the broadsheets now." That that thing, full of crazy talk. 
I love how like Alicia starts reading all about like birth control and everybody's like <gasps> and Claire's like oh uh so yes so it's Claire wrote it and we realized that something happened when Fergus brought the thing to the printer he printed the wrong thing he printed an extra thing and there it is in black oh and white. weren't you so glad they, they that came out because I thought please don't make us suffer through this like no one knows I know or how that she's or like why. a witch or something like that although you know, yeah. Who knows if that's going to come back to bite us in the butt? I don't know. We'll say. Um, I don't. Know, but thank God, because so, I would have like lost it. I know. Roger is back singing. You know, because when in doubt, Roger will sing. Um, and Jamie and Claire are talking about Roger, and and Jamie and Claire is seeing his side. Claire's, you know, I don't remember exactly what she said, but she was sympathetic to his cause. Um, they talk. She shows Jamie the broadsheet. They talk about it. Jamie, or Jamie figures it out. Oh, Jamie figures out what happened with the um with Fergus took the thing to the printer and you know this it was very like that episode of Brady of the Brady Bunch where they lost the earring and everybody had a hand in like what happened to it and yeah and, you know Alice was like oh wait I I was in the bathroom I took the towels. I took the towels and then Marsha was like wait I can take it from here um I saw the laundry basket and I thought I'd help Alice out so I took it down to the um, service porch. <laughs> All right, so wait. I have to interrupt you for a second because yes. something's bothering me. Please do. This, I did not remember this. I have to be honest with you. You guys, I don't remember a lot of this stuff. Like, I just, I'm sorry. My brain doesn't work that way, and I'm not a big re-reader. So, like, I've read, like, I think I read the first three books again. Anyway, I'm not a big re-reader. Um, I, didn't you pretty much know in the beginning of the episode that she was going to be pregnant? I didn't remember any of this, so no. That's what I'm saying. I didn't remember it. I just could tell from what was going on. I was like, oh, this, you know, this girl's pregnant. That's Well, I yeah, that I was, mean, you know, that's what they were insinuating when the, the mother... I, I figured that was the problem, but at the end... All right, keep going. When you get to that, I'll... Finish. Okay, okay. Um, I think I know what you're going to say, too, because there it, it comes out like a big surprise, and it shouldn't come out what? as a big surprise. Like, because they're, like, giving her the stink eye you know, five minutes into the show. Like, you wanton hussy. Um, and yeah. I mean, she was a wanton hussy because she, like, slept with the guy before if that she yeah. wasn't married to him. But they also were saying, like, oh, well, Mrs. Beardsley isn't the only one that's found herself in that situation of being pregnant. You know, I mean, I thought that's the situation they're talking about, not just, like, sleeping around. You know? So, I don't know. I don't know. I, but I, I, I'm with you there. The minute it happened and they started shooting, I was like, ooh, girl. So we're back to, like, the tavern or wherever they're keeping those casks. And Fergus is, and Fergus and some other guy are talking about the whiskey. And Fergus is talking about fine wines. And the other guy's like, you know, oh, that's like, you know, sissy drink or whatever and walks away. So and Fergus gives him this look that I was like, Fergus, come to mama, all is forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> You're back in the fold. It was just this look that was so French and so not mean, just like, oh, you poor man. You just don't, you don't know what you're missing, do you? You don't know how pathetic you are. Oh, I feel so bad for you. See, I now just is the time when it's starting to get hot. hot. It's starting to get hot. I'm going to start to play with my hair. I might take this hat off because I'm hot. Uh, I'm trying really hard not to grab some cheese out of the refrigerator. <laughs> I do. I have some water too. So I I always do too. But I'll I'm sitting here water. literally thinking, like, hey, I won't crunch if it's cheese. Remember when I got in trouble for crunching? I know. Um, okay. So, all right. So where are we? Um, so they find out that Morton's gone. Um, you know, obviously Roger had a plan to get everybody drunk and then they would like, you know, nobody would be caring or watching or whatever. And it's sort of working, you know, it's sort of working because they got Morton out. Morton's gone. Um, oh, it's the Brown brothers. So then the, the other Brown brothers, I think one of them is Richard and one of them is Lionel. I don't know which one is which. Um, I always do remember the Richard Brown though one because I have a friend named Richard Brown, so. I mean, and not like there's not a million Richard Browns, but like, although that's my friend, it's Rick Brown. Um, so, okay. So the brother, the brother shows up and they're going to go get Morton and, you know, teach him one because the brother, I guess, was trying to convince, um, the other suitor to, to 
you know, suit up and he would have none of it. So that marriage is off the table and they're really pissed. So Jamie is like, oh yeah, no, you're not going to go after Warren. No, that's not going to happen. And, um, you know, one of them points a gun at Jamie and all the guys, all the militia point the guns at the guy. Um, and Lionel Brown is like, okay, we're just going to talk it out. It's all good. Here's my gun. Okay. Oh, he did that so slick too. I know. I um, so I say more, so, so they, so they talk. Okay. Uh, this hat has to come off because it's really hot. Do I have hat hair? I can't tell. Hang on. Let me make you big. I'm going to put my hair back. Oh, are you going to cut this out? What? You putting your hair back in the middle of our video and telling everyone you're going to put your hair back. <laughs> I put my hair. I put my hair. Remember that? I put my hair back. I, I whip my hair back and forth. I whip my hair All back. All right. Yeah, I don't even care. So Jamie and, and Lionel meet up and they're like, okay. Lionel's like, they, they talk it out, whatever. Um, and Jamie and Lionel's like, All right, we're going to join your militia, but here's the deal. My men are answering to me, not you, Colonel. And Jamie's like, okay, but you, my friend, are answering to me. They can answer to you, you're answering to me. And Lionel's was like, all right, deal. So Jamie- and he's like, fine. Yes. My men are answering to me. I'll answer to you. You're answering to Claire. Because <laughs> she's in charge, and don't you forget it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know who We know who wears the pants in your family, Jamie. You clearly wear the kilt. Claire wears the pants. <laughs> Actually, Brianna wears the pants. But... Bri thank you. <laughs> I was waiting to get it out. Bri wears the pants. Um, so, okay, we're back. speaking of Bri, we're back at the big house. So, Jem and Jeremiah, or Jeremiah, Jermaine, Jermaine, are playing on the floor, and Bri goes out, runs out to get wood, comes back, puts some wood on the fire, turns around, and Jeremiah is gone. Sa, sa, sa. And so Brie flips out and she's like, I totally, I was very like moved by that scene. I've been there. We have, let me tell you something. Like, <clears throat> I was like, oh my God, oh, where is he? Where is you can tell who the parent is in this duo and who's, who's not <laughs> parent. <laughs> Cause I found it rather silly myself. My God. Um, no, for, I was like, for a number of reasons. Um, I mean, I guess I get it, and I get where she's going with it, because obviously um, Stephen Bonnet is a big threat, but you would have needed Stephen Bonnet to pick the child up, and, like, like it was more plausible that Stephen Bonnet would be in the house and take him than it would be for Jemmy, who, you know, has to walk by like this, <laughs> to get himself from a seated position playing with um, Jermaine all the way like across the house out the door and sitting on the on the stoop like well that's what her that's what she was worried about was that he came and took him i know but it's more yeah so i guess she i guess she was warranted to be worried because it was more likely that that would happen that than that jen would get himself all the way out there all by himself like i don't know how that happened um in the two seconds that she was it just it was just like it just was unbelievable that 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 would happen like, I wish that it was a little more believable than that. Um, clearly, he couldn't get himself. He couldn't He couldn't end up where he ended up on his own. I mean, would you agree? Yeah, but that's seriously. He wasn't where she thought he was. He wasn't where he left her, where she left him. And she's his mom. And You're he's a baby. You're looking at it from a parent's perspective. I'm looking at it from a, like, viewer's perspective. Because I don't have what, kids. I mean, I can, you know, I, I yes, I can relate to what it would I be. I can like. only hope that if you were babysitting one of mine, you would care that <laughs> one of us <laughs> Come enough, on. I, I, don't kid. I, don't, I don't understand. What are you saying? You didn't like the scene? I got the scene. I just thought it was, it was like so <laughs> contrived and unbelievable that Jemmy, who clearly cannot walk, and was in a seated position. I mean, it's like, 
Shemi would have had to time travel to get to where he ended up being in the amount of time that Brianna was was now. And I'm and people, you know, don't don't come at me, bro. Like people are gonna be like, you have no idea. You don't have kids. You don't know how fast they move. You don't know how fast they can get into like X Y Z poison or X Y Z. Or they'll be like. But or again, they'll be like, oh my God, maybe he's time traveling. <laughs> but again, we have we have empirical evidence that Jemmy can't walk without like somebody actually like physically like carrying him and going like boop 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 boop. And what was Jermaine saying? Oh well this is and this is the other part of it. Okay. Was Jermaine not speaking in full sentences in the wed- at the wedding episode? Like something along the line of like Grandpierre, like where is Jeremiah or Grandpierre? Um, you know why is Roger? Um, or no, to run? No, no, no. I'm sorry. Um, Roger, Grandpierre says that you're an idiot or whatever the hell he said. I don't know. Um, but he's speaking in full sentences. All of a sudden now he's like, "Bad, bad, bad." What was he saying? He was saying ball. But like, Jer- but like, Jermaine is like three years old. Like, do you only have like? Does he only speak French? Does he not understand English anymore? I don't know. Has he forgotten how to speak? Like, it was I just weird. The whole thing was weird and contrived to me. And it's probably right from the book. And so, whatever. Uh, 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 the bottom line is, they just—they're trying to be scary, and they're trying I to know, make. But I know. Great- and and Bree's mind is working over, running away with her. I, know, I mean, it makes sense. I get it. it totally I get it. I get it. I just wish that they had done it in a more plausible way. Because for me, that whole scene was kind of kind of laughable because it was so badly done. And I think it could have been like it could have been. It could have just. It could have been better. It could have worked. You didn't. It, it could have worked better. It could have worked well. It could have. Whatever, 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 whatever. Um, so they finally, yes, yeah, so they finally find Jeremiah. He's sitting on the porch in his little baby way of sitting. So somehow, some way, he got to, he went, he, he, you know, is, is um, early on major league thrower here, threw the ball, got the ball, rolled the ball, all the way out, all the way across, all the way out the door. And, you know, decided to somehow, like, crawl or whatever out the door. Eh, maybe it's believable, whatever. Maybe it's believable or that Jermaine stopped somebody... talking for five minutes. What? What? I said, maybe it's believable that Jermaine forgot to how to talk for five minutes. I don't know. Or maybe something happened that we didn't see and Bree was absolutely right. Oh, you mean Stephen Bonnet snuck in, took him, put him on the porch yeah. and ran away? Maybe Stephen Bonnet took him and... and you know, decided once he heard her coming, dumped him and whatever. Who knows? Maybe it was the dead body under the porch. Maybe it was the spirits. I think it's fun. (laughs) I think this whole thing, I love, love, love it. I love the horror aspect. Yes. The horror (laughs) aspect was fine. I just, it it didn't sit with me as well because of these little weird things. Well, and the bottom line is when you read the book, (laughs) book five is definitely... Like you said, it's, it's, there's some, as far as I'm concerned, there are some major punches in this book, but in between is very, you know, la 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 la. So they have to make it interesting for viewers, not readers, viewers, whether you've read the books or not, they have to make it interesting on the screen for the eyes. I know, I know, I know. I get it. I get it. It's just like I said, if for me, it was a little contrived. It's a little contrived of a, of a disappearing act, but it's all good. Whatever. I get the point. I get the point, even though the execution to me was a little bit contrived. Um, so she freaks out. Marsley's like, meet me in the kitchen for some, like, you know, drinking time. For some girl talk and some, you know, some of this. Um, I wish Marsley would come hang out with me and have girl God. time. I love her. I want Marsley to like answer a tweet or something of me that I that I tweet at her because every week when we live tweet I just like tag her. I'm like now is the time when we worship Laura Lyle. <laughs> that will come in a minute. Um, 
She's so she good. She might think we crazy. She's so good. She's so good. She's so she good. may be like, why are you acting so cray cray? <laughs> um, all right. Roger's signing up the Browns. They're all joining the militia. Clara ta- or Mrs. Brown takes Claire to the dodgings. Um, and the Browns have offered to take the baby because poor Lucinda, um, her baby died. She didn't really oh, say so anything. Sad. That was very sad. Um, so Alicia is um, helping set up the room and she com- confides to Claire. She only wants to be with Isaiah. Claire's like, oh, honey. <laughs> oh, honey. <laughs> you do so much better than him. Um, you know, I, and you know, I hate to break yeah, the news. Yeah, I thought for sure that Claire was going to be a little bit more empathetic in that <laughs> conversation. Like, oh, darling, I know. And instead she's like, you're better off. <laughs> like, I was like, oh my God, Claire. Um, yeah. Claire, oh my you, God. You know, you know what it's like to be pining for a guy for, yeah. you know, that you don't and, think and you'll ever see again. Young, she's this young girl. I know. I, I know. thought for sure Claire would be like, have you enjoyed your mints yet? <laughs> <laughs> I thought for sure it would turn clinical. I mean, what the hell, Claire? She's um, like usually all about the clinical stuff. So I thought she'd be like, um, might I ask a little personal question? Well, then, but then Claire just like barrels ahead and is like, well, I hate to be the one to break this to you, but he's married. So, you know, I, get over it. I know. Snap but- out of it. What happened to Claire? I know, I know. And she's like, what? And so we realize, um, okay, it's a, it's a big, what? 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 You froze. It's a day. What? It's like, it's like, can you hear me? Yes, now I can hear you. I couldn't before. It's like, last week, you all of a sudden, like, didn't fight Jamie and let Jamie do what he had to do. With Beardsley, uh-huh. which I was impressed with her, and now second week in a row, she's not being the typical use. I thought, oh, Claire's going to cause a problem. Claire's going to tell this girl. She, Claire's going to be all sweet and nice and empathetic, and and this is going to be a problem. Jamie's going to come in, and Claire's going to be like, we have to find him for her. You know what I mean? And and Claire just totally shocked me with that whole like, you know, well, hate to tell you, but he's married, so get over it. Um, I mean, I don't know that I, well, I don't know that I expected her to do anything else. I don't know that I expected her to be like, Jamie, we have to find him. We have to bring him back. Like love, cause love conquers all, you know, cause that was, cause Claire, I well, don't see Claire as like, heart. I don't see Claire as a big romantic like that. I see Claire as very practical and, um, I, you know, I don't think that I never think in the books too. I don't ever think that Jamie and Claire are like incredibly romantic and they make this point in the books like they don't they're not all you know i love you i love you i love you i love you you know they rarely say that um they're very they just are so claire's not one to be like oh my god he's so dreamy i'm so sorry let's get him back for you (laughs) i i thought she would be more motherly like she would be with brie you know what i mean was I think she was, but she was also like that sort of firm, like, you know, you don't need him, you know, you're better off without him. He's married, the jerk, jerk face. Um, and she was like, excuse me. And so, so it was like tough love, tough Claire love. Sort of. Yes, yes, yes. But anyway, it's a worse situation now because it looks like poor Alicia is with the child. So she does not know what she's going to do. Okay, and you said we would talk about this later because I pretty much knew she was with child, not from the book because I didn't even remember any of this storyline. Mm-hmm. Like, th- who's shooting guns? She didn't. I just figured she was pregnant, and and I figured that's why the whole marriage was off because she's pregnant with somebody else's child. No, I think it was just how that would, she slept around. She slept with. The, yeah, how would the around. how would the father even know? And. I, what father in his right mind who's married his daughter off and made, you know, the dowry, everything's set, is going to tell the guy? He's going to be like, all right, you're never to see that guy again and get in there and marry this guy. And, oh, she she didn't want to. Oh, no, she refused. Mm-hmm, that happened back then. Not. She refused. He'd be like, really? Because you are. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, you know, what's her name? Um, what's her name back in uh, uh, Hellwater? Uh, Amelia, our grandmother? No. Um, what's her name? Geneva. Um, she had, you know, she was forced to marry a dude, and she didn't love him, But and she was into Jamie, but she wasn't like... I'm into our stable guy. Like, I can't marry, you know, rich dude. I'm into our stable guy. She knew her lot in life. I'm sure there were plenty of women, girls, girls over the centuries that have said, I'm not doing it and ran away or God forbid worse. But I'm sorry. That's just, you didn't, you didn't defy your father. Oh, I mean, yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's a good point. And I don't, well, I don't know I that it was her father. I don't know it was her father the, either. What do you mean? Because at one point, she's the, the mother who is, oh, I, yeah. I think she's like some orphan cousin or something. I don't know. She makes it even worse because she doesn't have a lot of prospects and she should be lucky that they have found her a good match. Well, that's, and that's the whole point that, that they were like, oh my God, we scored like serious scorage here and she's screwing this up and like the hell. So anyway, we get to our, our Brie and Marsley scene where they're boozing it up in the kitchen and Laura Lyle. She's so good. She's so good. She's a monologue about the kill. I killed my father. There's a bunch oh of like really God. good monologues in this episode. Okay. So wait, were you like, you did? Like, I was like. Uh, yeah. I was, I was sort of like, where are we going with this? I don't Marcy. remember that. And right, then well, she told the rest of the story. Yeah. And she didn't really kill him. She just thought, she, you know, she thought about doing I it. I couldn't remember what happened to him. I was like, do we even know this? Do we even know whatever happened um, to him? I don't think that we know. I, th- I, I mean, I don't think that scene is in the book. I think that scene is all about like, oh my God, Lauren Lyle is so damn good. Like, what else can we give her to do? <laughs> right. But I mean, come on. You weren't thinking about like, like Leary's husband and... Did he die in jail? Like, I don't remember. I mean, I think the real father was kind of a douche. The second husband was, if I'm remembering correctly, sort of indifferent. I don't remember Jamie a was second nice. husband. I thought Jamie was the second no, husband. No, there was a second husband, and then Jamie was the third husband. Um, wow. I, I don't remember that at all, but I don't <clears> remember the original husband having to go to jail and dying there. You do remember that? Do not. I mean, I, I if, like I if don't that, think we ever found out. No, if we found out about um, her husband's, it was in passing, and I don't really remember. But it was just, it was the point, her point was that she wished bad things on him, and he died. And she thought it was her fault. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. not. And because, but, you know, just because you think you, you want things to be so, um, doesn't make it come true. Because if it did, she just would be... Because, just because you're thinking it right. doesn't make it true. Right. And all I wanted her to do was turn to Brie and say, sometimes I sing and dance around my apartment in, <laughs> in my, my underwear. underwear. Doesn't, doesn't make, make me Madonna. Madonna. Never, Never will. will. You totally yeah. just stole my line. I came up with that line first. Well, but I knew that line, so... Okay. It's evening in Brownsville. Um, they're all going to go off and pitch their tents. And Claire's that like, sounds like a monkey song. <laughs> it's evening in Brownsville. Evening in Brownsville. Take the last train to Brownsville. <laughs> um, but she pulls Kezzy aside and she's like, wait, I can spot a fever from 10 paces. Come here. Um, so he's got a fever. Stomps is falling. We get a Jesus H. Roosevelt Christ. And it was kind of a weird spot. Like, I would think, that, I think you know, like, maybe seeing, it. like, almost dead Mr. Beardsley would be a better opportunity to get a Jesus H. Roosevelt Christ in there, but I yeah, loved I'm, it. I'm not making the decisions and I'm glad I'll take it when I can get it. Um, so yeah, drink plenty of water or ale. Um, and get yourself good and drunk, get yourself good and drunk and then you won't feel the fever as much. <laughs> <laughs> that's my, that's, that's Dr. Claire's advice. <laughs> Isn't um, anyone worried about the morbid sore throat? I, don't, I guess Claire is the, not. Or the, or the, the putrid, the putrid <laughs> sore throat or the morbid I sore throat. I think it's the morbid Either sore or. throat. Um, because if I'm not mistaken, in the 18th century, that killed you. 
I mean, mm-hmm. for God's sake, George Washington died of that. I know. I know. What? what how come she's not like, holy shit, we got to get these consoles out right now? I guess she is. Hence the I mean, whole, like, your hence the whole, I must take these boys to, to the big house myself and operate right away, Jamie. I even thought they would have had time to get back. Like, honest to God. Um. So, so Jamie's sending Roger back with her. Roger's like, oh, great. Like, I get, like, you know, cart the wife around duty. And Claire's like, he's entrusted you with the thing he values most, Roger. Yeah, I loved that. But wouldn't you think Roger would be like, wait, you want me to go home? (laughs) 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 Um, Yes, yes, I would. Yes, I would. would Roger is way too concerned about what Jamie thinks. And he needs to just dial it back. Just be like, "Um, you're sending me home to Brie and Jemmy and the big house and Bye-bye. my guitar, my, my wee guitar. And, you know. Claire, why don't we leave now and really get <laughs> jump on the ride? <laughs> yeah, let's get a head start, Claire. Come on, right now. <laughs> um, all right, so... When we're gonna, all right, we're back at the big house and we're gonna look at Bree's drawings again. Um, and this is just a little short scene. She pulls all the bonnet ones out. She's like, I'm gonna like forget these memories. He's not gonna haunt me. I refuse. And she throws him in the fire. Great. She's like burning his memory. So now it's time for our dance party at Brownsville. <laughs> um, y'all ready for this? We are drinking our. We are drinking our whiskey, and we are bringing out our swords for the sword stance. I just have to say, how cute are Mr. and Mrs. Nice Brown that are going to take the baby? How cute are they? They're just adorable. I I want all the babies for them. They just need all the babies. They're just so cute. Um, I know. And for such a dour family and community, those Browns sure do like singing and dancing. I got to say, like, you know, you give them a couple of slugs of whiskey, and they are just like a different people. You know, they put their guns down and they party. I was almost a little surprised, though. I thought there would be some mention of this was a slave's baby or this baby is not white. You know what I mean? Uh Like, I I really was questioning, like, would this even, would they be okay with this? There is a discussion of that in the book because I went back and I was reading a little bit while I was waiting for you to be ready. Um, and they do talk about that, but they said that there would never be a question because the mother, what, and I don't know how you would know this. Like it, like the baby would never be pulled into slavery because the mother was white and you, 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 the rule, I guess, was you took the mother's status. So if the father was free and the mother was enslaved, then the child would also be enslaved. But if the mother was free and the father was a slave, then the child would still be free. That's what it's at. Um, but, but, but I mean, I don't know how you tell that. Like, I don't know. I, maybe, maybe sort of like the, the countryside backwoods. I mean, there's, there doesn't, you know, they're in North Carolina, which was clearly a slave state, but, but in the, on the ridge, there doesn't seem to be, a whole lot of slit that the, 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 you don't see slaves, you know, there's not plantations or whatever. So you don't really see a lot of slavery happening there. You see that Jocasta's, Jocasta's, um, plantation, obviously. I just, I just want to know how authentic that is, that they would be able to do that and no one would bat an eyelash. I think it was more authentic in the back country. I think I think it's probably a little a little more accepted, but I would think it's also dangerous. I would think it's dangerous, you know, because if you're out and about as that child, you don't know people around you don't know. Like you're not going to go to you know Cross Creek even where right. people live With, who have slaves right. and and right. I, I don't know. Maybe you have papers and and maybe the papers don't amount to a hill of beans. I don't know. Right. It's a good question. Um, so, all right, so they start the sword dancing and they get Jamie to do it. So let's talk about Jamie's dancing. what do you think? It was 
kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> he looked a little bit, he did, he, he did not look like it's something that comes supernaturally. Do you, I agree. He's, he's, he's cute as a button. I agree. I thought Jamie would be better at it. And I don't, and, and this, I think this happens in the book. And I honestly don't remember if he is, if he is supposed to be good at it or not. But I wanted him to be good at it because then also in the books, you guys should realize, you guys, I mean, I'm sure people have, have said this before, but Jamie can't hear music well in the books. Like music to Jamie sounds like scratching on the chalkboard. Like it just is, is, I mean, he can hear it, but he can't like process the sound. It just sounds like noise to him. Um, that said, you know, deaf people who are deaf can feel the vibrations and are very good dancers. And, and he doesn't have any, these music issues in the show. So I don't know. I just felt like, <laughs> okay. Do you remember the episode of Happy Days where Fonzie told Joni that he would be in her dance marathon with her? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it comes down to like Joni and Fonzie and like some, two, uh, one other couple and Fonzie's so, oh, Fonzie had to be up the whole night, the night before for something. So he's had like <laughs> no sleep and he's exhausted and he's ready to call it a day. And then like the other guy is like, yeah, Fonzie's going to like, drop out like you know loser and Fonzie's like excuse me and comes he like, to life. does comes to life and he does like the bottle dance from Fiddler on the Roof <laughs> <laughs> and he's so good and that's what I wanted the scene to be and it just wasn't he was very bouncy <laughs> he was Yeah, I, I don't know. I just thought it. I I, I thought it would be. I, I don't know. I don't know. I I I don't know. It was very sweet, and I was glad he did it. But like with the whole, you know, come on, McDo, come on, McDo. I can't, I can't, I can't. Come on, come on. All right. You I, you kind of just thought he'd pull out a little more. I think. Maybe. <laughs> well, I was wondering either Sam's, you know, just not a dancer or. They wanted him to sort of come off a little awkward. I, 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 (laughs) it was awkward. (laughs) He's so adorable though, that who cares? I know, I know, I know, I agree, I agree. I, I I noticed that it, I don't know a lot. I don't know anything about Highland dancing. I've seen it at like Celtic fairs and stuff, Mm -hmm. but I don't really know anything about it. Um, I do know about Irish dancing. And did you notice that he started, like he got himself the way you have to start out, uh-huh. like, you know, your fist and yep. you have to start out yep. and then you do your dance and then you like at the end. Uh-huh. And he did that. So I was like, this is almost like Raymond dance. <laughs> But um, I did like yeah. he was very pleased with himself when it was done. And so, you know, it's it's all good. I don't know. I just, yeah. I felt like that. Yeah. Maybe it's, it's the adorable. choreography I was thinking of. Like, it wasn't it really... bad. Don't anybody think that we're saying he right. was bad. The, the choreography was just like, la, 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 It was la, very la, simple. La. That's why I'm saying bouncy. It was like, So, um. Yeah, I think Jamie, you know, probably Roger's a better dancer, I would I would guess, but yeah, but it is fine. It was fine. Oh, it was yeah. very cute. It was very cute. Oh. Um all right, we're like we're almost there. We're almost there. What? Thank God cuz here's the freezer and I'm going in it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Okay. <gasps> I touched my hair. She, I know. I'm I'm doing a little bit too, but sorry guys. Well, sorry, I'll <laughs> She's like hey, you don't have I have been very customers. good, and I want compliments on how non-hair touching I've been tonight. I know I've I've been pretty good, but I've just I'll try to sit on my hands. I no, we're I get it. Done. I get we're it. Almost done. We're almost done. 
it's annoying as hell. I wouldn't want to watch it either. So, um, okay. Jamie and Claire are a bit drunk. They go for a walk. They start, they talk with the baby. You know, he's very like, Oh, I need to talk to you about something. And she's like, Oh my God, why? He's like, do you want, you want to keep that baby? And they talk about it. And then it's right. This whole conversation is right out of the book. Um, it's their last chance to raise a bairn together. But they agree that they're okay without a baby. You know, it, it's this is the best place for the baby to be. Um, it's very old school, Jamie and Claire. I loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. And and this season, we're just loved getting it. like classic Jamie and Claire. Classic. Classic. And, it is, and they're really, really bringing it across very well. Yes. I'm eating it up with Very spoon. well. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. And it's yeah, all they right are from the book stuff. Really yeah, it's yeah. just it's just totally you're feeling them again. Yeah, yeah, you know. So you hear a gunshot, and it's Alicia, and she shot herself, but she's not very good at it. So she just like kind of grazed her arm right there. Um, yeah, nobody really, nobody really, uh, nobody really addressed that. Well, I think like, Claire did, the, and, and either Alicia's it wasn't got, the fact that Alicia's got bigger problems. <laughs> <laughs> mention that i kind of i was a little surprised at that what the whole suicide thing yeah i was like in this day and age to like present that and then move on i don't know i i don't know i was kind of surprised just because this show seems to really tackle like the issues of the day and sort of merge issues from today or or the way we handle things or the differences seem to be threaded through and this was just sort of like oopsie <laughs> I don't think it was meant to be I don't think it was meant to be like that I don't think it was meant to be sig- sig- not significant that's the wrong word but I don't think it was meant to be a very special episode about suicide you know yeah, that, there was a cat they needed her to do something they needed her to do something desperate um and that seemed like the easiest thing to do why she just didn't get a pistol I'll never know why she had to like go drag out that big old you know rifle or whatever the hell she had um but they get her back to the house claire's looking at her arm whatever um morton show morton shows up oh jamie goes to get some more whiskey morton shows up and he and he's great and he says a lot of he's he's really really good um he pulls a gun on jamie which i was like jump back and jamie's damn, like boy. i'm impressed that you're and doing this but it, like it was sort of like damn roger should have thought of that <laughs> Roger could learn a thing or two from Isaiah Morton. Um, <laughs> and Isaiah Morton is like, you know, you, you know, uh, I, yeah. Then he's, then he was like, I, I've been married for two years, but we don't love each other. We don't live together, you know, and I love, I love Alicia and I can't be without her. I can't live without her. And all this is ringing really true for Jamie. Jamie finally is like, oh, okay. Yeah, I understand. All right. So he brings him upstairs. There's a big reunion. Um, again, Morton gives another really nice speech about, you know, you can't tell me, Jamie or Roger, that if you if if you were faced with never seeing, you know, Mrs. Fraser or Mrs. McKenzie again, that you wouldn't fight to the ends of the earth to get them back again. And both Jamie and Roger are like, yeah, yeah, right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, They're like, damn it. So they sneak, they sneak them out. I don't know why they didn't just do it in the, in the night. Like, wouldn't it have been easier to just get them out at night? Thank God. <laughs> I was like, like, okay, we could get you out at night, or we could wait till it's daylight. Because it's it more daylight, challenging that way, and I like a challenge. Freaking, I was like, because it was daylight, and I was, she was looking like out the window, and I was like, oh, what's going to happen? And all of a sudden, <laughs> I see them, and I'm like, um, they must have a better plan than this. And they didn't. No, no, no. So they knock over some barrels, um, make some noise. And I couldn't tell whether Jamie felt like he had to make the ruckus with the horses because they made the noise with the barrels or he was going to do that anyway. Um, I really didn't know, but they <laughs> ride you describe off. Describe the ruckus, sir. <laughs> Jamie gets the horses out. Jamie's like, yeah, this goat like got in the middle of the horses and you know, they don't like each other or whatever. No, I um, love the horses thing because I thought it was very reminiscent of the cattle in the Highlands and making a um, a distraction with the horses going that way and they're all going to run that way. They were getting the horses 
Which they way were just they getting... What? Which way did they run? They ran this way <laughs> and that way. <laughs> this way. So, yeah, they were, like, creating a distraction, and the horses took off that way, so they all had to run that way so they wouldn't see them going that way. Oh, I didn't even get that. That's very smart. That, that makes a lot of sense. Um, Thank you. So you get a last shot of the Brown Brothers and a last shot. There's a last, a long shot of the Brown Brothers and Jamie. And the Brown Brothers are like, something's up here, but we're, we're, we're not going to question it. It's all good. And Jamie's like, good. Yeah. Um, and then you see the horses and there's some Claire, there's some Eau Claire um, uh, talking over it. I can't think of the word because I'm so tired. Um, now Claire and Iration, Claration, if you will. Um, <clears throat> and that's it. That's it. There's a last shot of the horses, last shot of Alicia and Isaiah Morton. Off they go. The end. If nothing else happened in that episode, we got some fine Fergus. We got some fun Fergus. Fergus, is I, back, I really, baby. I was my, my, uh, my, my, I don't know what I'm trying to say. My trust was, ah, oh, Fergus, Fergus. This it might be the very first time in the series on TV that I've been like feeling Fergus. Um, I just want a little Fergus. more confidence. What? I mean, I didn't feel younger Fergus in that way, but I loved younger Fergus just because he was so French and Fergus. This Fergus has been sort of pushed to the background. Um, maybe because Lauren Lyle, Marshley has been so, you know, um, um, like the unsung hero of every episode and like steals every scene she's in. But I, I liked I that they gave it's... Fergus. And also remember in Fergus was in a lot of season three, but like in ways that weren't necessarily helpful for him. Like he was the one, it's... remember that bad episode where Jamie was in the brig? And Fergus had to be the go-between for that all the time. But it was so dumb. And we were all so mad that, like, they're making Jamie be in the brig, which is dumb, that we couldn't appreciate what Fergus was doing. Um, I think that it's a matter of when you're reading a book, the things Fergus is doing, you know more about what he's thinking, what Jamie's thinking, what Claire's thinking. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know more about that it just doesn't translate to the screen well. So Fergus, unless he's taking part in some big thing, which he was never the front man. He was always Jake and Jamie second, like you said, you know right. what I mean? Right. So you're never really going to get what you got. Well, well, Fergus so hides in the shadows. That's his, that's what he does. You know, yeah, he's, not, well. <laughs> he's not, he's not the spotlight is never on him, but I, but the, the, the thing about Fergus that's so good is the little things. Like the little French, you know, the look or the or the um, saying something, making reference to something, whatever. Um, I don't think that Fergus, the Fergus we know and love, has really shown up yet. I don't think that the television viewers have really seen that Fergus. Right. But there I, needs to be more of an air of danger about Fergus. Not danger, and, but and, like... And, and more confidence and more like witty. But I'll tell you what, this episode gave me hope that maybe right. we're going to see a little bit more of Fergus. Uh, you know, I'm going to say bad boy and that's the wrong word, but I can't think of any other way to say it. Like, like a thimble full of bad boy. Passion? Maybe. Pa you know, more passion or just being more, more French I you know I can't I don't, I don't think that's it I think more passion about everything he does maybe a little more confidence um he'll he'll he would he would fight to the death for Jamie so that's that's right we're that. he's Jamie's second I love when he and Jamie like put their heads together and they don't even have to right. question you right. know what I mean so good right um but like, yeah suaveness that, like like Feeling Confident. European, you know, there's just, all there's of, a thing, he should all be, of that he should be off in some confidence. way, like not off, but like there's, he should be different from everybody else. And I feel like maybe he's a little too the same as everyone else. And there just has to be a little more of that, like cosmopolitan, I don't care that he grew up in a whorehouse. 
he's still French to the core. And there's just that Parisian air that is different from Scottish or American or anything else. It's just, you just, it's a feeling. And there were traces of it tonight that were a good, a good sign for the future. Right. Good job. Um, all right. That's it. We're done. Any last do, thoughts? Do we want to do our spoiler sec or no, spoilers minute are or two? Already, um, how far into this are we? And I'm just too tired. We're 141, so we got to go. Um, oh my god! I know. Yeah, There's like a couple minutes we'll cut, but other than that, how, yeah, what no, happened? We, we used to make 45 minute videos. I don't what know. the hell happened? We talk about shit all through it. So oh, maybe god. we'll do maybe we'll do a spoiler video this weekend because I will see you this weekend. The third sister Jill. We can't spoil the third. True. Week, but we'll try to do it. Um, third sister Jill is becoming more and more. She's obsessed, you guys. She's obsessed. She's maybe obsessed, we'll do... and she's be she's becoming <clears throat> she she really is becoming more and more part of mom with every week that goes by. Maybe we'll do a Facebook Live with her over the weekend. Yeah, um, oh, of course. You guys, well, of course, we forgot to say it again at the beginning of the video, but subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, it is the best way to get our videos right, like the when they're hot off the presses, right at oh. nine o'clock on Sunday nights when we tend to post them, even before Carol posted in the. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, on the blog, um, you will be able to get the video right to your door. And it's awesome. Um, so follow us. want so, them to go watch it on the blog. Yes. But, but like, click the link anyway just so we get the clicks and, and the it's not the blog anymore. It's the website. Oh, sorry. The website. Whatever. Um, but honestly, I really just, um, I don't even want to say hot off the presses, guys. I, we just need you guys to like our video. I mean, to, to follow us. It's, you know how YouTube is. It's all about the subscribers. I watched some video tonight. My daughter asked me about this like company that makes clothes that she wanted to order something, but she didn't know if they were legit, whatever. There's like a gazillion like influencers who are like 16 and they have like 2 million followers. And I'm watching some video about like stupid clothing. And this girl's honest to God got like, Honest to God, she had like 22 million video or something. It was crazy. And we I was should like, be influencers too. We could be not so 16 influence, influencers. We're realizing, we're realizing because we've never really, you know, we're just, we're trying to do this the right way and we're trying to be a little bit more professional. And in order to do that, we need more subscribers. Yes. So, so please if do. If you are not a subscriber, we would totally appreciate it if you would subscribe. Yes. And we are on Twitter, we're on YouTube, well, as we said, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Snapchat, but we're never on that, so don't even bother with that. But, um, so find us everywhere, like us everywhere, talk to us everywhere, leave us comments everywhere, we read them all. We don't always comment on everything, but we read them all, I try to like them all at the very least. Um, and the conversation is awesome, and we really appreciate it. And that's it, guys. Thank you so, so much. We love you. We love you. We love you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Any last words, Carol? Yes, I barely touched my naturally curly I hair. I hope we didn't annoy. I hope we didn't, I hope we didn't annoy you too much. Um, and that's it, you guys. We will see you next week.